Hey guys, I'm Jim and I'm obsessed with movies and it's time to celebrate one of the Japanese masters, Kenji Mizuguchi, with his 1954 masterpiece, Sancho the Bailiff. Sad, bleak, dismal, emotional, melancholy. It's better than it sounds. This is Sancho the Bailiff. Sancho the Bailiff, also known as Sancho Deo, was released in 1954 and was directed of course by Kenji Mizuguchi. It's based on a short story of the same name by Mori Ogai, and it follows two children who are sold into slavery. Sancho the Bailiff bears many of Mizuguchi's trademark hallmarks, such as themes of poverty, a critical view of the place of women in contemporary Japan, and of course his famous long shots. So the film is set in medieval Japan, where a compassionate governor is sent into exile. His wife and children try to join him, but they are separated, and the children grow up in a world of suffering and oppression. Mizuguchi actually initially intended to centre the film around Sancho, the slave lord in control of everything. Wow, that would have been a very different film. Instead of watching a film about two likeable, compassionate people, we can watch a film essentially about Leonardo DiCaprio's character in Django Unchained. <laughs> of course, the film ended up being the sad story of the children called Zushio and Anju. In previous versions of the story, Anju is depicted as Yushio's older sister. For this film, Kenzi Michiguchi was so determined to cast young Koyo Kagawa as Anju, who was of course considerably younger than Yoshiaki Hanyagi, who plays Yushio, that he decided to make Anju Zushio's younger sister. For many years, Sancho the Bailiff was unavailable in DVD in the English-speaking world. This lasted all the way up till 2007, when it was released by the Criterion Collection. Masters of Cinema re-released the single film in Blu-ray and DVD in a dual format in April 2012. Sancho the Bailiff is a truly incredible piece of work. It's one of those films that tears you apart emotionally but still retains a sense of hope in the midst of the darkness. Mizuguchi was one of the greatest filmmakers of all time, and I think a big reason for that was his ability to take such an honest look at the human condition. Mizuguchi knew there was a lot of hate and negativity in the heart of man, but he also clinged to the idea that there was always good, compassion and empathy. Zushio and Anju's father is a great example of this, with the wonderful message he gives his children at the start of the movie. <laughs> This is a film all about how important it is not to view any other human being as less than you, and how vital it is not to forget everyone's struggle is just as relevant as yours. And there's another wonderful quote that gets this point across. Exactly. So many lines of dialogue in Sancho the Bailiff make you sit back and think. It's just a wonderfully thoughtful and deep film that pulls no punches and forces you to sit up and take notice. It's also a real tearjerker as Mizuguchi pushes another theme that is a line repeated many times, isn't life torture. Our characters live a cold and unjust life that causes you to want to engage with your empathetic side and help more people in real life who really need it. Right, I'm joining the Samaritans. Alright, gay. Seriously, I almost broke into tears several times in this film. Mizuguchi presents such gentle characters in Jushio and Anju, and although their struggle is horrible and painful, Mizuguchi never throws anything in your face to force you to feel sorry for them. He simply lets the bleakness of their situation seep slowly but surely out of the screen. The torture of the slaves is always off screen. We simply hear the screams of pain, we don't need to see any more, and there's a deep and powerful sense of anger that resonates in the viewer watching these people being treated like that. And somehow we are just as shocked as if we had seen the carnage on screen. Anju is a wonderful character, she is the film's heart, a lovely person who refuses to ever give in and become a person she hates. 
Her life is horrendous, but unlike Zushio, she never gives up her hope, and her optimism eventually becomes the remedy Zushio needs to escape his autopilot acceptance of being a slave. She's very much Mizuguchi's way of saying that even when you have nothing and are in deep pain, there's always something to hope for. There's always something worth believing in. Anju believes she will one day reunite with her mother, and it's her dedication that eventually reignites Zushio's empathy and belief in his father's teachings. This brother and sister relationship is heartbreaking. They go through everything together, quite literally, and the bond between them is never truly broken. Zushio is a great character too, starting off believing in his father's teachings and eventually through years of being a slave, losing any sense of motivation. Thanks to Anju, Zushio regains his personality and desire for justice and becomes a great protagonist. We also forgive him for losing his mind for a little while. I think a lot of us would and again, it made me sit back and realise how awful it must have been for people who were forced to be slaves. Zushio is very relatable because he is prone to giving up and losing self-belief but he has this strong burning desire inside to do good. He just needs that shot in the arm to help him rise up from the abyss. It's amazing to see these two people holding on to such great morals despite everything that is thrown their way. It shows you that despite how bad things are, if you hold on to your ideals and your family, your hope can never die. And as for the direction of this film, what can I say? We're not worthy! We're not worthy! This film, like several films by director Kenzie Mizuguchi, was widely placed in both Japan and the West for its smoothly flowing camera work. But these camera movements were in fact planned and blocked by his great cameraman, Kazeyu Miyagawa, rather than by the director, who gave Miyagawa free reign use of his camera. One of the strengths of this film is the ability to blur the lines, to make you feel like you're watching a fairy tale, but at the same time a story that completely feels true to the facts of life. This is a truly poetic film, and a very contemplated one. It's slow paced like a lot of Mizuguchi's works, and I think his intention is to show you how much life can change over a long period of time. Sancho is an epic film depicting a long period of injustice and forcing the viewer to come to terms with the fact that sometimes life is cruel and doesn't unfold how he expected to. There are some long and peaceful sequences, there are those small but very human moments where some sort of momentary happiness is achieved. Sancho is a sad film, but strangely enough, it's not actually depressing and in some moments it's very positive. And again, that's the fine line Mizuguchi seems to walk, providing an uncompromising look at the pain of being human, but never making the horror engulf things to the point of no return. As with Mizuguchi's other masterpiece, Ujetsu, the landscapes in this film are stunning and pay tribute to Japanese scroll paintings. The black and white not only sets the mood, but it is visually stunning, as if each scene is a moving photograph and we are looking at memories going by. And as for the ending, well, be prepared to cry. This is one of the most tear-jerking endings in all of cinema. Thanks, Mizuguchi. I'm not crying, you're crying. Let it out, have a good cry. This last scene is one of the most monumental and emotional pieces of film I have ever seen. And I'm not going to spoil it for you guys, all I will say is it is a true culmination of everything the film has built up to, and all the emotions will show for you all at once. And it's quite overwhelming actually. But as I said, while I do become overcome with emotion watching this ending, there is enough of that gentle Mizuguchi vibe that leaves a smile on your tearful face. How many films can do that? I mean, I used to think this film was emotional growing up. I hadn't seen nothing. Yes, I found my girl emotional, come at me. Sancho the Bailiff won the Silver Lion for Best Direction in the 15th Venice International Film Festival, which brought Mizuguchi to the attention of Western critics and filmmakers. One notable review of Sancho the Bailiff comes from the New Yorker film critic Anthony Lane, who wrote in his September 2006 profile Mizuguchi, I have seen Sancho only once, a decade ago, emerging from the cinema a broken man, but calm in my conviction that I had never seen anything better. I have not dared to watch it again, reluctant to ruin the spell, but also because the human heart was not designed to weather such an ordeal. Well, I can tell you Anthony, it's worth watching it again. I've seen this film about three times, and every time the experience is just as shattering and just as powerful and just as emotional and none of the quality goes away. So watch it, mate. For RogerEbert.com, 
Jim Emerson said about the movie, I don't believe there's ever been a great emotion picture in any language. This one sees life and memory as a creek flowing into a lake, out into a river, and to the sea. In the BFI's 2012 Sight and Sound polls, Sancho came in at 59th in the critics poll, with 25 critics having voted for the movie. Strangely enough, in 1990, producers Robert Michael Geisler and John Roberto commissioned director Terence Malick to write a stage play based on Sancho the Bailiff. A private workshop of the play was undertaken in the fall of 1993 at the Brooklyn Academy of Music. It was directed by Andres Wijada, with sets and costumes by Elko Ishiaka. A smaller scale workshop was mounted by Geisler Roberto under Malick's own direction in Los Angeles in the spring of 1994. Plans to produce the play on Broadway were postponed indefinitely. Sancho the Bailiff is a truly essential film. It's a film that you will never forget. Haunting, evocative, emotional, and yet somehow warm and welcoming. Thanks for watching everyone. Sancho the Bailiff, of course, comes highly recommended. And if you've never seen any of Mizuguchi's films, first of all, what you're doing, seriously, what you're doing with your life, son, you need to watch Sancho the Bailiff or another classic he done, Yu Jitsu. He's done loads of incredible films. Mizuguchi's films really do touch you emotionally and they really do leave a mark on you if you enjoyed this video please subscribe for more like the video comment down below and i'll be back for more retrospectives very very soon once again i'm jim and i'm obsessed with movies and it's my job to make you obsessed with them too see you next time